Welcome to the Pursuit Podcast. I'm your host, Shana Recker, and I help entrepreneurs be, do, and have more in life through sharing the strategies and the mindset tools that have helped me build multiple six figure online businesses. The mission behind this show is simple to allow more people to pursue their most meaningful goals, take the right actions and make their desires become a reality. This podcast and our guests will help you make a quantum leap from where you are to where you want to be. And before you jump into this episode today, don't forget to go and download the nail your niche free guide and online tool to help you get super clear with your niche so that you can attract in those dream clients. You can grab that at shanarecker.com forward slash niche. Now let's dig in. Hello and welcome to the Pursuit Podcast. I'm your host, Shana Recker. And today I want to talk about why starting a coaching business is more than just a way to create income and how it's actually going to help you discover who you really are. And it's been a journey for me as I've been building a coaching business for the last five years. And I've really just come to realize that This has been more than just a way to create an income and a way to show up and serve, but to also, you know, build a business and create that extra stream of income for our family. It has been amazing for that. And I am so grateful for the income that we have created by teaching what I know online. And and that's really what the knowledge industry is, is really just showing up. You have a skill set, you have things that you are experienced in and you use that knowledge and you create a business around it. And there's so much opportunity in the knowledge industry. It's crazy. It's a $365 million revenue generating per day industry. And it's looked at by Forbes magazine to be about a billion dollars a day by 2025. You've probably heard me say that stat before, but if you understood the massive amounts of opportunity that were in the coaching industry that were, that are behind the knowledge industry and sharing uh, what, you know, online, the self-education revolution, as Dean Graziosi would say, that exists right now. There's so much opportunity. There's never been this much opportunity before ever. And the internet makes it all so, so much easier for people to become a part of it. And this is what I want to talk about today is not necessarily the income that the business can create, which is amazing for people. Today, I want to talk about the self-discovery journey that happens when you put yourself in this space, when you decide that you want to create this business. And I want to just talk about what that's like. And, and because, you know, this is the thing you're going to see coaches, business coaches online talking about the income that they can make and, you know, how to be better at sales and how to, you know, make million dollar years and all of these things. And I think that there is a really important topic that's not talked about so much in the online coaching industry. And that is the self-discovery process of the person you become when you put yourself into this industry. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And you guys, I'm riffing on this one. This is just a topic that came to me the other day as I was thinking about my own journey. And I was thinking about, you know, what's been sort of the biggest thing that I've you know, accomplished in my business. And it's more than the money. It's the person that I'm becoming through the process of building this business that has me the most proud of, of the things that I've accomplished, because there's a lot of stuff that you go through and you really discover who you are as you go through them. So this is what we're going to riff on today. I have no idea. I have a few points I've written down for y'all, but um, you know me, I like to just like freewheel it and see what comes out. Now, before I get into my freewheeling self, there are a few things that I want to share with you guys about what's happening with my business and what you guys can expect and what I'm working on. Uh, That's going to help and support you build your own businesses, whether it's the coaching, consulting, mentorship, whatever your business is, even if it's a product, a Shopify store, I have resources that I'm creating for you on all different levels of proximity to me so that I can reach more people and give more people an opportunity to learn from what I'm, what I've got going on, what I'm learning as I'm doing this stuff. So the first thing is I have a free masterclass. You're going to see more and more of these free masterclasses coming from me. 
These are opportunities to learn uh, bite-sized topics that are going to help you build your business. So my first one is happening on September 28th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to shanarecker.com forward slash secret element. And this masterclass is all about a the one secret element that you all have. You all have it. But some of you aren't using it to your advantage. Some of you are actually using it and it's a disadvantage for you, for your success in what you're doing, what you're creating, whether it's business or life, this secret element works on both planes. And when you know what it is and you understand how it can contribute to your results, it's like, it's like when you know it, you're like, you can't, first of all, you can't unknow it. So it's always going to be there. You're always going to be aware of it, which is good. That's what you want. Um, But then you can use it to your advantage. So I'm going to be teaching all about that on September 28th. It's called the secret element of success. It's for coaches. I'm going to relate it more to the coaching uh, mentorship consultant industry, but really anybody can join it and get great value out of it. So you can go to shanerecker.com forward slash secret element to get registered for that. It's happening on September 28th. So you're going to see more of those things coming. I'm also creating smaller super affordable containers, high vibe containers that are teaching you more and more things that are going to help you build your business. So I'm starting to take what I've learned because I've got mindset coaching, I've got business coaching, strategy, social media, you name it. I've got all of this content. And right now, the only way you can get all of the content from me is when you join my mastermind, (laughs) my quantum accelerator is my, my group container that has the closest proximity to me. And this is where I put all of the steps for success to creating a coaching business and launching a high ticket group coaching program. So the quantum accelerator is my high ticket group coaching container, but it's where you get access to me on a weekly basis Uh, live group coaching calls, you get all of my content, all of my, my resources in one place and that just launched. So that's the other big thing that's happening over here is the quantum accelerator accelerator has opened its doors. Uh, This is an application only program. So if you are somebody who is thinking about starting an online coaching, or maybe you already have a small coaching business, but you're ready to take it to the next level with a high ticket group program, this is the container that's going to help you do that. Not only do you have my steps for success, but you also have me by your side each week, helping you continually move that business forward. So that is also happening right now. So as we're wrapping up 2021, I've been really looking at what is the best way to serve to serve you guys and to give you the knowledge that you need in order to help you grow, in order to help you learn, in order to help you get onto your own self discovery journey of of building a business and and you know really seeing who you are and what you're made of and and what potential you have for this world. I'm creating different types of containers for you to learn from. And then there's my highest proximity container, which is my mastermind, which is the one where you get pretty much the closest proximity to me to work with me on a weekly basis. You're going to see more and more of this. And I'm really excited about this. I'm going to be layering them in. So there's lots of opportunities to join different things. So if you are not following me on Instagram, you should be because that's where that's the first place you're most likely going to hear about the free, uh, all of the different offers, but mainly the free offers. Uh, and that's quantum leap queen on Instagram. So there you have it. Just get into my, get into my world. And I promise you, I won't let you down. Here, here's the thing. I'm going to share a little bit of my own story and my own journey in this, but most people start, most people believe that, or, or more, most people do this is they're starting their coaching business because they see the potential to earn an income. So they see other people out in the coaching space and they are like, well, this girl's teaching social media and she's making six, seven figures. If she can do that, I can do that. Or this girl's out there teaching spirituality. Well, I know lots of stuff about spirituality. I've taken some courses, programs, read some books, done some things. I have experience in that. I could do that too. Or maybe you're, I've taken business classes. I know how to do this kind of stuff. I could teach what I know, or I've maybe built a successful business. I know a friend who she built her own Shopify store. And because of that experience, she now teaches other women how to build Shopify stores, right? So we all have experiences, knowledge, things that we can use to create business. 
And that business creates an income. And that's really the main reason why we start these businesses is to, to, to create an income, to serve people, but to create an income, to create some wealth so that we can be, be more, do more, have more. And that's great. We want, we want to start those businesses for those reasons. Those are the reasons that give us the motivation in the very beginning is the potential of what's possible. As you start to build your business, you start to realize like there's, there's a multitude of ways that you can be showing up online. And I think what happens for a lot of people is they start to emulate somebody else because they don't know, right? They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They're new at this. So they gravitate to this person or that person, or, you know, who they see somebody who's having the success that they want. And they're like, oh, I'm going to just do it like she does it because that's what makes sense to me. And I get that. I did that too. But here's what I discovered is that in the process of mimicking what they were doing, I was finding some success for sure. I was showing up. I was getting out of my comfort zone. I was like, well, if this person's doing live videos every day, then I guess I'm going to do live videos every day. So I was definitely doing things out of my comfort zone by following their lead. But what happens is, is you start to realize that when you're not fully bringing your authentic voice to the online space, when you are trying to be like somebody else, it only gets you so far. It only gets you so far. And you start to see, you start to run into resistance, started to run in, you start to run into friction. And that's exactly what happened to me when I started my coaching business. I started coaching network marketing because the coaches that I were following at that time were all network marketing coaches. And I was like, well, I'm, that's what I know. I've been successful in network marketing. Let's teach other people what I know. And so I started showing up like they did. And I started teaching things that they were teaching and talking like they were talking and setting my stuff up. Like they were setting their stuff up and And it was helpful in the beginning for sure. But then I started to lose some momentum because I was running out of, I felt like I was, I don't know, running out of steam almost. And it, what I realized was that I actually personally didn't love teaching network marketing. I was just doing it because that's what they were doing. And I thought that I was good at that. And so I started doing it because that's what they were successful at. And I thought I would find success in that too. And what I realized was, yeah, I loved showing up. I loved doing lives. I loved sharing the business. I loved talking about things to people and teaching, but I didn't love teaching network marketing. I loved to teach more of the business side of things, right? So in the process of emulating other people, I realized that that was only taking me so far. And that if I really wanted to take my business to the next level, I really had to get comfortable with what I really wanted to share. What did I really want to talk about? What do I feel passionate about? And so that's when I started switching gears. So on this self-discovery journey, on this journey of starting my business, I didn't realize it was going to be a complete, you know, shift in my reality of who I actually am. You think, you know, who you are until you're put into situations that challenge you and that really push you to your limits of your comfort zone. And then you really start to discover who you are. And that was the first moment for me in starting my business that I had to make a pivot and really, really feel like, am I capable of doing this? You know, I'm going to start, I'm going to stop following these coaches and I'm going to start doing things my own way. Now I have to admit, I started following more business coaches and I started emulating a little bit more of what they were doing. But I, at the same time, I was realizing that I had to show it up. I had to show up and do it my way. I had to show it up. I had to show up and, and, and do it in a way that felt, felt real and comfortable for me, not necessarily comfortable, but felt in alignment with me. Like I can't show up in a a suit every day because that's just not who I am. I can't, um, you know, like there's just, the way that I do my lives, the way that I speak, I I have to do it my way. I have to share it in my terms. I have to use words that I would use versus feeling like I had to show up. Like uh, when I, here's an example. When I first started my business, my coaching business, and I was told I needed to do Facebook lives. This is when Facebook live was new. So I was like, all right, if I got to do Facebook lives, I got to do video. I got hair and makeup done one day. 
I had professional cameras and stuff brought in and lighting. I had scripts that I had written and I was like, all right, if, well, if I got to do video and actually this was actually even before Facebook live, this was when I just had started and realized I needed to do videos. I was like, well, I need to have all this stuff. I got all done up. And then I was like on camera and I was so stiff and I was like trying to pretend to be like, I don't know, like even like, I was, I felt like a newscaster almost. And I was like, it was so hard. It was so hard. I was like dying inside as I was trying to do this. And I'm like, why is this so difficult? And it's because I was trying to be something I wasn't. I'm not that person. I'm super casual. I like to say words like act and like phew and whatevs, right? Like, you know, that's just how I speak. And so I learned through the process of trying to emulate other people that that was creating resistance and it was hard. And that when I just showed up and spoke as me and just talk, like I talk and share my opinion, as I feel that that was easier. And so it became then a journey of trying to find my own voice. And I didn't find it right away. I started noticing that I needed to do that, but it's still really difficult sometimes I'm sure you can relate where you're on social media and there's so many people doing what you're doing and you just can't stop comparing yourself to what other people are doing and feeling like the way you're doing it is wrong. And that's a self-discovery journey right in itself is to stop comparing to other people and just start showing up as you, like putting the blinders on. And speaking like you speak, this podcast was actually probably the biggest, I would say like trainer. (laughs) I don't know if that's the right word, but it's, this has been, this, this podcast has really been the, 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 the space out of all the spaces I show up that has really allowed me to just get really comfortable with my own words, with getting really comfortable with my own feelings and being able to share them in a way that just feels right to me. And I don't know if it's because there's no video here and I'm not worried about what people are thinking of my words in the moment. Like I'm recording these and then there's, you know, it's just me, it's just me in the microphone right now. And so there's less worry of judgment, but it helped me creating this podcast, helped me find my voice because every time my husband would come up, he's my editor. And he'd be like, that was gold, babe. That was gold. You were, you were on your soapbox. It was great. Right. And, and he's the one over time who was like, every time he would tell me one was great, I would realize the reason that it was great is, was because I was just, I was just talking. I was just telling you how I felt. I didn't have a script full of notes. I didn't have, you know, something I was trying to do or be like, or whatever. I just wanted to talk about something. And those were the episodes that were the best. So I started to find my voice through this podcast. And then I had to start transferring that into my social media, which is a little bit of a different game because you are, you know, people are seeing, you know, your video real time. If you're doing lives, people are, you know, reading your words after you post them and you're looking for that like, or that comment or that engagement. And there's a lot more weight on, on it you know, when you post it, you're like, oh, are people going to like this or not? And so that's part of this process of starting a business is because you're starting to put yourself out there and share your opinions, your thought, your expertise on things. And you're looking for that validation externally to say, is this okay? Is this okay? Am I good? Did you like that? And there's a point in time where you got to let go of that because you're never going to get the response that you're hoping for on social media. Yeah, you might, you might get some posts that are like, you know, going viral. People are commenting and that's great, but you're always going to have that, that feeling of like, it was, is this good enough? And so the self-discovery journey that happens when you start a business like this and you start putting yourself out there and sharing your thoughts and your opinions on things is that You have to let go of the need to please everyone and that you have to let go of the need to, you know, make sure that what you're putting out there is quote unquote, okay. And you have to just trust in the fact that if you feel strongly about this and you're talking about this and you're posting about this, and this is something that you feel connected to and that you think will serve your audience and you believe in it, that that's all you need 
in order to be able to put something out there. And what happens once you post it, once you say it, once you get it out there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You believed in what you said. That's what matters. And that's part of the self-discovery journey. When you do a business like this, when you start in coaching and when you start in mentorship and you start putting yourself out there, you're teaching people what you believe to be true about your experiences, your knowledge, your expertise. And you have to fully stand in who you are and what you believe to be true and trust that you are you are divinely guided to be out here sharing. You wouldn't have the idea to start a business if you weren't the person to be able to, if you weren't capable of doing it, you would never have received the idea if it wasn't for you. So if you are sitting on an idea right now, if you are sitting on a business that you haven't started yet because of your fear of being good enough, I'm telling you right now, the fact that you even have that idea, you are good enough. You're more than good enough. You know, one of my clients right now, she's a advertising journalist. She's an award-winning advertising journalist, has been that for 20 years, writing copy, winning awards, written for major, major uh, articles, CBC, uh, Hunting, Huffington Post, like all these places. And she was doubting when we first started working together, doubting her experience was good enough to be able to coach other entrepreneurs on how to do their own copywriting. And it's like, we have to remind ourselves of how amazing we are at things. I'm like, you know, things, you know, how to do these things. There are people out there who are dying to know how to write their own copy. They don't want to hire somebody how to do it. They want to know how to do it themselves. And you have this tools to teach them. You just have to trust that you can do that. And then of course I show her how to put it all together. And then she's out there. She's actually launching her first free masterclass. She's doing amazing, but she had to trust that she knew what she was doing, that she had the skills and knowledge. Of course she did. But it sometimes it takes having somebody on your side going, listen, look at you. You have what it takes. This is why I say this is a self-discovery journey because you can, you can have the knowledge and the experience in something and then know that you know those things. But then the minute you got to put yourself out there to the public and say, I know shit and I can teach you how to do it. All of a sudden, your your self-sabotage, your gremlin in your head is going to start going, no, you don't. Who do you think you are? You can't do that. What are you going to teach people? And that's part of, that's like the main part of the self-discovery journey is shutting that thing up and continuing to go anyways and trusting that you can. Because then once you do and you get feedback, you get people who go through your your program, your course, and they are seeing results, then you go, oh my gosh, I do know what I'm doing. It gives you more ability to stand in your own power, confidence. Yeah, it's it's more confidence. Every time you help somebody, it's like putting another notch on the confidence belt. Yep, okay, I did help that person. Yep, okay, I did do that. Yes, I really do know what I'm doing. And that's why when you start a business, yeah, okay, you can do all of the technical things, but really starting a coaching business is a self-discovery journey because you've got to really go inward and go, who am I? Who really am I? How do I really want to show up? What do I know? What can I serve people with? How can I serve people with what I know? Because things are going to challenge you. They're they're going to challenge you all along the way. There are going to be people that don't sign up for programs. There are going to be people that don't respond to uh, posts or lives. There are going to be pivots that you're going to want to make as you're learning and growing. There are going to be things you want to change in your business, and it's going to throw everything off for a while, and you're going to have to rebuild sometimes. And you're really going to discover a lot about your your, uh, persistence if you're able to persist through the the shitty times. You're going to learn a lot about how courageous you are. You're going to learn a lot about how you can handle change and how you can um, continue to keep going when things feel off. You know, I talked about that on the weekend. Are you willing to be bad in order to be good? I talked about this on my Instagram stories. Are you willing to put stuff out there and have nobody respond and, but then show up the next day and do it again and do it again and do it again. You're going to learn a lot about what you are truly capable of when you allow yourself to start a business like this. 
This is more than just about making money. Starting a coaching business is more than just about an extra stream of revenue or a mainstream of revenue for your, for yourself. It's more than just time freedom. It's more than just, I mean, having a coaching business gives you all kinds of amazing things, time freedom, time leverage with group coaching programs. It gives you, there's an amazing community of people out there. You can tap into, there's just so many great things about this business. It gives, there's so much income potential. But the the biggest thing I think it gives you is that self-discovery journey of really learning about who you are and what you're capable of. And this is the thing you're going to have to put on the blinders. You're going to have to block the other people out sometimes, even though they're great and it's fun to follow them, but sometimes you have to turn it off because they can distract you from really being who you are. And I've done that. I mean, gosh, I've got really great friends in the industry that I've had to like turn off and like not follow for a while because I was getting distracted and feeling like I wasn't enough and wasn't doing things in the right way. And if you feel inspired to do something in a certain way, then that's the right way. If you feel inspired to show up and do something, then be inspired, show up and do something that's right. I don't think there's ever anything wrong. There's only lessons. And you'll start to learn if you start trying to do what somebody else is doing all the time, it's going to stop working at some point because it's not you. And so that's part of this journey. And I think those who have the long-term success in this knowledge industry, where they're coaching and teaching people what they know, the people that have the long-term sustainable success are the ones who really discover who they are who really just authentically put themselves out there, how they believe it should be. And they're not worried or thinking about what anybody else thinks. They're teaching people what they know through their experiences, through their knowledge, through the, through their journey. Cause this is a journey. It's a self-discovery journey and you're going to learn things. And those who really discover who they are, the business becomes easier the knowing becomes easier. The tapping into your intuition becomes easier because you don't have the resistance. You're not fighting with trying to be something that you're not. You're fully aligned and you're you're taking action from a place of this is what feels good. This is what feels right. This is what feels natural. This is what feels, um, what I feel passionate about. This is what I feel good about. Like this topic right here, the minute this topic dropped into my mind, I had to like quickly Voxer myself and just make a note of it because I didn't want to lose it. And it was because as soon as I thought, I was like, yeah, this is really more than just a business about creating money and income. Lots of people talk about the money and the income you can create. And that's great. It's there. The potential is there for it for sure. But know that this is more than just an income business. This is more than just an income generator. This is a self-discovery journey. And you will change. In fact, you have to change in order to achieve those high levels of success. Because if you, if you were already, if you already had everything in you to become a million dollar coach, you would already be a million dollar coach, but you don't, there's an evolution that needs to change within you. And you, you learn that through the journey of building your business. You learn how to become more of yourself. You learn how to become authentic how to, how to, you know, really show up in a way that feels true to you. And that's when you start to click. That's when things start to click. This business shouldn't be hard. Yeah. There are hard moments, but it shouldn't be a constant, uh, frustration for you. And if you are feeling that way, then I would check in and say, am I fully showing up as myself or am I trying to build a business that's somebody else's. Cause I guarantee if you look deep enough, you're probably not allowing your full authenticity and, and, and your full guidance. And, and you're not trusting yourself enough to really show up how you feel it should be. And when you do that, it just fucking becomes easier. It's just, it just becomes easier really trying to show up more and more vulnerable and more and more authentic and more and more just how I truly feel what my clients need and just showing up and creating containers and spaces for them to learn from. So the the faster you can go through that self-discovery journey and everybody's journey is going to be different depending on what you're working through, (laughs) depending on 
what shit happened in childhood. Sometimes it's like, you know, there's a lot of deep rooted shit we go through and sometimes it affects our abilities to really be able to put ourselves out there authentically. And the faster that you can work through that, the fa- the faster you're going to find that ease and flow in your business. So I just wanted to share that today. I hope that this is speaking to those of you who needed this message to really fully tap into who you are, because nobody needs another, a duplication of somebody else. You know, people out there are looking for you, the way that you speak, the way that you think, the way that you, all the things about you, they are looking for you and they can't find you if you are trying to be like somebody else. So jump on the self-discovery bandwagon, get it, get out, get yourself out there, start speaking your heart, start trusting your own intuition, your own guidance And you'll know you're there because it's going to feel easy. This whole podcast was, I had a couple notes and I was like, I don't really know hundred percent how I'm going to get this point across. It's going to come out how it comes out. And you know what? It was super easy because I just allowed myself to trust my intuition and trust my knowledge on the topic and let the words flow. And you can do that too. So I hope that this gave you inspiration to tap into that intuition, that and trusting yourself a little bit more. And of course, as always, if you found this episode valuable, it means the world. If you do share a screenshot of this into your Instagram stories and tag me at quantum leap queen so that more people can find this information and hear this episode and really tap into their true authentic self. I always appreciate it and love sending you some notes in your DMS when you do. All right, everyone, that's it for me. I hope that you have an amazing day and don't forget to get signed up to the secret element free masterclass that's happening on September 28th at 1 p.m. Eastern standard time. You can jump in at shanarecord.com forward slash secret element. Have an awesome week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to today's episode. It is my hope that this chat today helped you become relentless in the pursuit of your dreams. If you loved it, please leave an honest review on iTunes. It helps more people find this podcast, this content. And as always, I love when you share screenshots of these episodes on your iPhone into your iStories and tag me in it. I always reshare them and send you a personal thank you message every single time you do it. So thanks so much for joining. Until next time, be relentless in your pursuit.